Welcome back to another DAX for Power BI tutorial. If you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. In today's video, I'm going to show you a very interesting spin on the 12 month rolling average. This question was raised by a subscriber when he was watching the 12 month rolling average video and had his own question. Uh, basically, he wanted to take, the, uh, take a monthly sum of his data and then take a 12 month rolling average on those monthly sums. Uh, at first I told him he should just change the interval to month and go back 12 months, but he was correct in saying that that would still only look at the data on a daily level. He wanted to actually sum into a monthly sum and then look at a 12 month rolling average. So it's actually an interesting problem and we will tackle that in today's video. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, there are multiple ways to do this, but the way that I came up with seems to work just, just fine. So we're gonna to come to our fact internet sales table, our table with all of our uh, order data, and we're gonna create a new column. We're gonna take this column that I had just created, and we're gonna name this, uh, let's name this our monthly sum. And this is going to start with a variable. Variables are very handy because they allow us to set a, uh, to set a variable that we can use in a calculate function later. So if we set variable, we'll call it current month, and we'll set that equal to the month value of the first non-blank of our order date. And first non-blank takes two parameters. So if we just put in one, it will satisfy the, satisfy the second parameter and close off both parentheses. Month returns the number of the month. So that means January is one and February is two. So we are taking the first non-blank of the order date, which basically gives us the order date of whatever row we're iterating through. So let's say we're on, let's scroll over to the left. Let's say we're on uh, February 3rd, 2013. First non-blank would give us that value as we iterate through the table in this calculated column. And then we'd take the month value, which would just give us the two out of February. So uh, as we go forward, um, then we can return, you have to use that after you use a variable, and our actual return for the column will be calculate. And we will take the sum of the order amount, or sales amount, and we will filter uh, the orders table, or factor net sales table. Um, we, will, we, will, we will filter based on the month of the order date equals to our current month. And also I just realized we are only um, accounting for months, but since we have uh, data going over multiple years, we're actually going to have to set another variable. And this is going to be the same thing, but instead for the years. So let's set a variable for current year. And we'll set this equal to year. And all we have to do in the calculate uh, function is just throw in another uh, filter. So we'll throw in a filter, fact internet sales, and we'll do year of order date equals current year. And that will be our calculated column. All right, and if we scroll over to the right, we will now see this sum for the month. Uh, so we are looking at the first four columns here. They all have the same number because they're all in the same month uh, as we see order date. So we see all of our Januaries, uh, they have the same monthly sum. Our Februaries have the same monthly sum going down. So that looks like it's working. And you may be wondering how this is gonna help us answer the question, but we're actually gonna have to use this monthly sum to then take that 12 month rolling average of this monthly sum. So the way we're gonna do that is with a measure because we want our, uh, we want the data we display to be very dynamic. So we need to make it a measure. So we'll come to our measures table. We'll right click and go new measure. And we will call this uh, true 12 month average. And this is a little bit complicated. It's gonna start with the calculate function because we want to wrap our entire return in a calculate function because that helps us um, deal with filters. We're gonna take the average X, basically average X is a normal average, but it introduces an iterator. So it'll iterate over the table based on a certain condition that you specify. 
And the reason I'm actually using average x instead of average is because uh, average only takes a column reference, but we're actually going to need to specify something that's not a true column. We're not just taking uh, the average of column one. We're actually taking the average of, of a distinct uh, set of values from a column. So we have this column we have just created, which is called, which is called our monthly sum. But we don't want to take the average of all of these individual uh, values that have multiple values. We're actually only going to want to take the average of a certain subset of those, the actual distinct values. So basically, we want to take a uh, we want to take the distinct values out of this column, and then only take the average of the values that matter. And the values that matter are the values that fall within the last 12 months. So what we're going to do that is we're going to go back up to our measure that I clicked off of, true 12 month average. And it is the average x. We're going to make some space so we can see. Uh, so it is the average x. And average x takes in two parameters. The first parameter it takes in is a table. But we're actually going to uh, provide it the values of uh, monthly sum. Values returns the distinct values of a column. So since we only want to uh, provide the distinct values of monthly sum, that's perfect. And we're going to average based on monthly sum. So it looks like monthly sum is in here twice, but in reality, we're just telling it what it needs to sum, and we're providing the values that it needs to sum. It's kind of confusing, but... Um, and then in the calculate function itself, we can throw in a filter. Since we're doing a 12-month rolling average, we want to do the same kind of dates in period uh, function that we used in our normal 12 month rolling average. So in the dates in period, we are going to take an order date and we are going to go from last date of order date, uh, last date, order date, uh, and we are going to go back negative 12 and that's months. So this is our entire calculate function. Let's go ahead and visualize this. So open up the visualizations pane and we will open up a new tab. Let's go to a line chart and throw in our order date into the axis and we will get rid of the hierarchy. Let's make this a little bit bigger and we'll throw in our monthly sum into the values. Uh, right now this looks a little bit uh, incorrect because we are taking the sum of our monthly sum and if you remember uh, in our monthly sum column every value of the same month has the same monthly sum. So if we go ahead and take the average of that, it will provide us with a value for uh, the monthly sum. So every value of the same month has the same value. So if we look at, let's say, uh, June 2012, every value in June 2012 has the same monthly sum. It's pretty interesting looking, kind of like a stair step. But if we take our new uh, measure that we've created and throw it into the values pane, we see a uh, our new measure show up as the 12 month rolling average and it looks similar to the um, monthly sum because it is the stair step uh, and but it does show a 12 month rolling average of our sum monthly uh, order amount so that's pretty cool not exactly what we're looking for because we don't really want this stair step we'd rather have one point per month so to do that we're, we're going to need to create one more calculated column so let's come back to the factor net sales table and we are going to create a new column. We are going to call this uh, first of month. And we're going to set that equal to the start of month uh, function. And we're going to throw an order date. So click enter. And this new measure will show up on the right. So we have this first of month column. So January, 20, uh, January 28th of 2013 turns into January 1st of 2013. So basically all of the dates get truncated down to the first of the month. So while we have that um, column highlighted, let's come to data type and make this a date and get rid of the time by coming and setting this date time. So let's scroll to the right. Scrolling to the right, we see our proper first of month date. So now when we come back to the visualization, we can get rid of order date and we can throw in first of month and let's get rid of the hierarchy. And this doesn't look exactly how we want because we see that the true 12 month average is just mirroring 
our um, average a month with someone. That's not correct. That's because in our measure, we are still looking off of order date, but now we need to look at first of month and first of month. So once we click enter, we will see the true 12 month average. Uh, let me change that color, it's a little bit difficult to see. So we'll come to data colors, set this light blue, uh, they're all blue, but let's just make it a nice green, easy to see. So this is our true 12 month rolling average of our monthly sums. So it looks pretty good. Um, go ahead and give that a try, it's a lot of steps, but it's really satisfying once you figure it all out. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next Dax for Power BI video.